Edward Seymour is known most prominently in history for his role as a Lord Protector for Edward VI during his childhood reign as King of England. It was in this role that Edward Seymour could basically rule over England and dictate policy and control what was made into law and what wasn't. When Henry VIII died, his throne passed to his son, regardless of the fact he wasn't the oldest child of the infamous king. Edward was passed onto the throne ahead of his half-sisters Mary and Elizabeth, due to their gender. So at a very young age, Edward VI came onto the throne. Henry VIII did establish a council who would help the nine-year-old king rule until he was of age to do so effectively. However powerful Edward Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset was, he eventually went the same way as many members of the Tudor nobility did during the reigns of their infamous monarchs. Today we look at the brutal execution of Edward Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Edward Seymour was born around the year 1500, and throughout history his family claimed that they had descended from royalty through Edward III and possessed royal blood. His father was knighted by Henry VII following a battle, and he also joined Henry VIII on his French campaigns. Edward Seymour was educated allegedly at Oxford and Cambridge University, and he was found to not have been as charming as his younger brother Thomas, however he was a very intelligent person. He was interested in religious reform, which would serve him good later under Edward VI, and he married at 18, having two sons. Edward also fought in France, and was knighted by the first Duke of Suffolk in November 1523. He was then made a JP for Wiltshire, and also became the master of the horse for Henry Fitzroy, the illegitimate son of Henry VIII. So at this time Edward was mixing in royal circles, and he even helped Cardinal Wolsey out in France, and was granted much land from monastic dissolutions from Wolsey. In September 1531, Edward Seymour became an esquire of the body to King Henry VIII, earning a nice wage for this role, but importantly he became involved closely with the king's court. In this role he could interact with the king at a personal level, and he would have been able to become close with Henry at the time. During this role, he would leave his wife, and then would remarry to a descendant of Edward III, named Anne Stanhope, who gave birth to ten children over the coming years. In autumn 1535, the king and his now second queen, Anne Boleyn, would visit Seymour at his manor, showing how close he was to the king. Henry VIII's persistent quest for a male heir would in a sense provide Edward Seymour with an even closer link to the English throne. Henry's second queen, Anne Boleyn, continued to miscarry, and not provide the king with the male heir that he greatly wanted. Following this, the king then began to get tired of Anne, and began to keep an eye on Edward's sister, Jane Seymour. Edward's sister eventually married Henry, once Anne Boleyn had been taken care of, with her execution inside the Tower of London in May 1536. Allegedly, one of the miscarriages that Anne faced was brought on by the fact that she saw Jane Seymour sitting on her husband's lap. Jane Seymour would provide King Henry with the thing he greatly wished for. Jane Seymour gave birth to a boy on the 12th of October 1537, and Edward Seymour became an uncle to the heir to the throne and future King Edward VI. However, the birth of the successor to the throne came at a cost, with Edward Seymour's sister and mother to the boy Jane Seymour dying from complications from childbirth shortly after the birth. Despite the death of his sister, Edward Seymour continued to rise to power and prominence during the reign of King Henry VIII. In 1542, he was appointed the Warden of the Scottish Marches, and later the Lord High Admiral. He was later made the Lieutenant General of the North, and during this role, he was told to put the Scots to the sword after the marriage of Prince Edward and Mary Queen of Scots fell through. During a military campaign against the Scots, he landed at Leith on the 3rd of May 1544, took control of Edinburgh and pillaged it, and burned many castles and villages that stood in his way. In July 1544, he also became the Lieutenant of the Realm under Catherine Parr, whilst Henry was away from England. Seymour continued his work in the north against the Scots, and he continued to be a prominent member of the King's court. In January 1547, it was clear though that Henry VIII was gravely ill, and arrangements were made for his son and successor Edward VI to reign over England. The issue was that at this time Edward was still a young boy, and needed a council to help him reign until he was of age to reign independently. 
Edward was only nine years old and was far too young to rule alone. In Henry's will, he dictated how a council of regency consisting of 16 nobles and churchmen would help his son to rule and govern England. It was Edward VI's uncle, Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset, who became the leading individual involved in the council, and he was given the honourable title of the Lord Protector. Although Henry dictated that the council would rule collectively and equally, Edward Seymour became the leading figure in the group. Most of the power was now invested in Seymour, and he could himself basically rule over England and make the decisions. 13 of the 16 agreed to the appointment of Seymour as protector, but it's thought he may have paid off some of these to secure their support. Seymour managed to seamlessly take over control, and he even secured permission from the king to grant him the right to appoint members of the Privy Council, in the way a monarch would do. By having these powers that the monarch possessed, it showed that Edward Seymour was the most powerful man in the whole of England. This caused great jealousy with his brother Thomas Seymour, who even married Edward VI's stepmother and Henry VIII's widow Catherine Parr to try and increase his own power. The jealousy his brother had would go further, as Thomas Seymour was caught with a pistol in the garden of the young King Edward VI's apartments at night. For this, Thomas was accused of dozens of crimes, and it was believed he was planning to kidnap Edward VI. Thomas Seymour would then be sentenced to death, and it would be his own brother Edward who would sign his death warrant. Edward Seymour himself was a Protestant, and as a Lord Protector, he began to make big changes to the Church of England. He brought in a new English prayer book, and allowed clergymen and priests to marry. Edward himself made attempts to destroy aspects of the Church of England, which were associated with Catholic worship. For example, religious wall paintings were whitewashed, and stained glass windows were smashed and removed. Seymour ensured also that the king was educated as a Protestant, and that he would continue to reform religion and the elements of Protestantism as he grew older. Seymour also changed the law in a number of different ways, for example abolishing treason and crimes created during Henry VIII's reign, and he also got rid of heresy laws. England in 1548, however, was going through a period of social unrest. Rebellions and riots began in Cornwall, and spread throughout around half of England's counties within months. Some of these were angry against Seymour's religious changes, with the new prayer book being a target of the anger. Edward Seymour himself pleaded for compassion with the rebels, and in June 1549, he convinced the king to pardon all the people who had torn down hedges in a disorder. This was popular with the common people, and it promoted how Seymour was a man of the people, and he did gain favour with the commoners. However, a further rebellion broke out in July 1549 in Norfolk. This rebellion included Robert Kett, and was also known as Kett's Rebellion. He was a large landowner, who said it had been wrong to enclose common land, and he agreed to help protesters to persuade landowners from enclosing land. Kett became the leader, and his rebellion grew quickly to the point where 16,000 angry rebels were camped outside Norwich. Kett came up with the demands, including that no lord of the manor should be able to exploit common land, and this rebellion was the closest thing that Tudor England came to being engulfed in a class war. Kett formed a council himself, made of representatives of the revolt, and this self-government was a huge issue for the government, as he took rule into his own hands. His elected council even sent their demands to the king and his government. Seymour then responded, saying that the rebels would be pardoned if they returned to their homes. Force was mentioned though if they refused, and the government tried to disperse them, however when the rebels entered Norwich, this was rejected. The mayor refused to allow Kett's army in, however armed with swords, spears and other weapons, Kett's rebels stormed the walls of the city. This shocked Seymour and the government, and a force of 1400 men were sent to restore order, but these were defeated and were forced to flee. Seymour then sent John Dudley the Earl of Warwick and around 13,000 soldiers to deal with the attack, and Kett was forced to give up the city. Seymour did attract criticism for the way he dealt with the rebellion, and he was blamed for the social unrest across the country. Towards the end of 1549, Somerset's policies were failing, and he began to alienate the privy councillors, who needed to help him pass laws. John Dudley the Earl of Warwick would begin to lead a coup to remove Seymour from his position of Lord Protector. By the start of October 1549, Seymour was aware that his rule faced threat, 
and he withdrew to Windsor Castle for his own safety. A council at this time published details about his mismanagement of the country, and on the 11th of October, Seymour was arrested and brought to the King, who was at Richmond Palace. Edward VI summed up the charges against Seymour, saying that he was accused of ambition, vainglory, entering into rash wars in my youth, negligent looking on New Haven, enriching himself of my treasure, following his own opinion, and doing all by his own authority. Edward Seymour no longer had the support he previously had, and was forced to give up his position of Lord Protector, and he was officially deposed of this in an Act of Parliament on the 14th of January 1550. He was also deprived of his other positions, and of much of his land. Seymour was sent to the Tower of London, where he was held as a prisoner until he was released by the Earl of Warwick, who was now the leading figure in the government. He was later restored back to the council, however in October 1551, he was arrested again and sent back to the Tower, being accused of treason. Edward Seymour was accused of planning to imprison and murder the Earl of Warwick and two other councillors, and despite these charges being false, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. On the day of his execution, whilst inside the tower, he wrote his final religious devotions down on paper, and he said, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Put thy trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and this was found in a small book. He then signed it off, from the tower, the day before my death. On the morning of the 22nd of January 1552, Edward Seymour woke up inside his cell at the tower at 8am. He was taken out of the tower's walls and escorted by a large guard to Tower Hill nearby. A scaffold had been erected in the place of execution in which so many met their end, and Seymour, who had hoped for a pardon from the king, would not be so fortunate. He climbed the steps of the scaffold and knelt and commended himself to God. He turned to the large crowd who were there to witness the execution of the man who at one point was the most important figure in England, more so than the king. During his speech, Seymour said how he'd been condemned by law to die, and that he accepted this, and believed he had done nothing still. Edward also spoke how he took comfort from God, and how he'd been allowed time to repent and prepare for his death. During this time though, a huge noise broke out and was heard on the horizon. People ran in all different directions in a panic, and began to even hide in ditches. The furore was caused by the trampling of feet, as a huge group of guards arrived late for the execution, and they all rushed forward with their halberds and spears, as Seymour was already on the scaffold. Sir Anthony Brown was even seen riding to the scaffold, and it was believed by some that the king had brought a last minute reprieve for Edward Seymour, but this was not to be. Seymour stood on the scaffold holding his cap in one hand, and he continued his address. He said, For albeit the spirit be willing and ready, the flesh is frail and wavering, and through your quietness I shall be much more quieter. He had personally witnessed many executions, and hoped for one quick stroke of the axe to bring his life to an end. Somerset then knelt in the straw where the block had been placed on the scaffold. He then read a short confession to God, and he took the hand of each of the men on the scaffold and wished them farewell, before he gave several gold rings to the executioner. Seymour removed his gown in a calm manner, and he knelt at the block and untied the strings of his shirt collar. The executioner then helped him do this, and handed him a handkerchief to tie round his eyes. Somerset raised his hands to God and placed his head on the block. He didn't appear to be too scared, and as he knelt there, the executioner then asked him to remove his doublé again. This must have made it difficult for the executioner to see where to aim his axe. Somerset then placed his head on the block once again, and his lips quivered with the words, O oh Lord Jesus, preserve me. And then with one stroke of the axe, the former Lord Protector, and the most powerful man in England's life, came to an abrupt and bloody end. Edward Seymour's body and head were then placed into a wooden chest, and carried back into the Tower of London for burial. Many in the crowd rushed forward to touch the blood of the executed, and wanted to dip their handkerchiefs in Seymour's blood to preserve a relic. Edward Seymour as a Lord Protector had everything. He could rule practically England, and dictate whatever policy or changes he wanted in the country, whilst Edward VI was in his minority. 
Seymour was a man who seemingly wanted to do right by the commoners, but his legacy is an important one which was marred by social unrest across the country. He is remembered for carrying out many of the huge religious changes of the English Reformation that saw Edward VI's church become heavily Protestant. Like so many though during the Tudor period, he flew incredibly close to the sun, and his downfall was met with the sharp blade of an axe in horrifically bloody fashion. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.